Hi everyone. So what I thought I would do today is talk you through LogSeq's PDF annotation feature, look at an example, and also talk you through how I typically go about using it. So first things first, what we've got, we've just got LogSeq open, and we'll create a new page, and we'll call it Washing Machine Example or Guide. I'll just create a new page, and then what I've prepared before is a quick reference guide. So we'll copy or drag and drop that into LogSeq, into the page that we want. So what that will do is it will create a link, which is basically a exclamation mark, square brackets with the name of the file, and then in parentheses, the location plus the name of the file, plus a timestamp, I believe this is. So doesn't mean much, but once we click out of it, once we click, click enter, we get the little logo plus the file name. We'll click on that, and that will open up on the left-hand side, basically the PDF file. And what I can also do is just show you it through Adobe. And as you can see here, it's the same thing, uh, just within LogSeq. So that's quite, quite useful. What we've then got, is top left, we've got more settings. This is just the background or the shading of it, um, cream or green slash blue or white. Area highlight, which we'll get to in a sec. Highlight mode, zoom out, we'll zoom in, do what, they, what you'd expect them to do. Outline, um, in this PDF there is no outline, but if you have a PDF which has page breaks and has been set up with uh, bookmarks, etc., you should be able to see a an outline of it that just allows you to easily navigate to various different sections. We then got an information. I usually don't open this because it doesn't mean much to me. And then an annotations page, which I'll get to in a sec as well. We've then got page numbers. So one of eight, we can either go page down, page up, as we've got on the right hand side, or we can just click into the page and then um, go to the desired page if we know what we're looking for and then close what that does, that just simply closes the PDF section, brings you back to LogSeq, and then if you want to get that back, you just click on the file name and you get the file back. You'll notice one thing that is missing, um, and it has been heavily requested, is the search. So hopefully, um, in due course, we'll get a search feature so that we can search within the PDF, which will make things a lot easier. So now in terms of annotation, what I really like about LogSeq's feature is this. Um, we'll do an area highlight first, and what we might want to do is we'll put some notes, control panel um, setup, something like that. We'll do area highlight. We'll highlight this section. We'll highlight a yellow, and we will copy ref, and we'll paste that here. And that basically just creates a copy of what we just had. So why is this useful? When you're reviewing things, you might not want to open up the PDF. Um, you might just want to look at your notes. You had an image. What did it look like? And here it is. Oh, and I should have said you can also um, play around with the sizing um, of it. And then what you might want to do is um, key something along those lines, so that you can have your own notes within it. What we then might want to do, just scroll down. Uh, this is an image, but obviously, if we do the same thing on text, it does the exact same thing. Um, so you can area highlight images and text as you wish. Slightly more um, interesting to me, at least, is the highlight mode. So what this allows me to do, and I'll just select maybe this section. So sometimes you might see there's a little bit of spill. Um, don't worry too much. That's just the way the PDF was encoded, um, I believe. So, but what it does, it basically takes the, or it highlights the section that you've just selected. And what we can then do is we can paste it in here and we've got the link. 
you will see on occasions, again, it's the way the PDF was encoded or the way the highlights work, sometimes you're missing a space. Um, it's just the way it is for the time being, but hopefully that can be fixed in due course as well. On the same highlight, what we can do is if we click on it, you can see we can highlight it a different color. We can also copy ref, which is really what we just did. We can copy text. Now what this will do is it will basically allow you to paste the text that you can then edit, um, make different changes, but it is only text. So the key difference, if I close this, and I click on the text, obviously nothing happens. If on the other hand, I click on the linked reference, that will open up the PDF and bring me to the section or to the page where I made the highlight. So just keep that in mind when you're copying ref or copying text, how you want to do it for prosperity. So we'll just do one more, go to the highlight, we'll just highlight this in this occasion, we'll copy it red or pink and we'll paste that there so that's it and again what we can do is we can just start typing our notes i find this to be very useful because now as i said earlier i can close the pdf and i can just go through this and just look at my various different notes of what i have obviously you can make this a little bit prettier and um, make it have a bit more sense the sense that we can do um, water flow and we'll just do one more and we'll do it up now we'll go here and we'll put a heading called so that's a brief guide the annotations page I rarely look at this one because basically what it does it goes to Basically, it removes all your notes. It just goes to the annotations that you've made in the file. So if you want to go back and see, okay, well, cut out all of my notes. What did I actually highlight? What did I actually take notes of? Only on the linked references, obviously, because the text is now text, so there's nothing we can do about it. And it just gives you a snapshot. I, I rarely use this one, although it might be useful um, if you just want to see what you've highlighted. So we'll just go back, just go back to the page. Now, how does this look within the file folder? So it will create a page called HLS, um, which is Highlights Daily Reference Guide. And this is really the same page as the annotations page, I believe, because you can see it's just got the various different links. Again, this is not something I open too much. We've got the washing machine guide, which is really the page that we just have open. So it's got the links as well as our text and then what we do also have we go up we go to assets we now have three files so we've got the pdf so this is quite useful if you're downloading a lot of stuff from the internet and you just drag and drop it into logseek it will create a copy within your assets folder so then you don't need to worry about where did i save it can i delete my delete downloaded folder um, what happens if i rename it it doesn't matter because as long as you don't touch the copy that you have within your assets folder. You've got an EDN file, which I believe is used to map the highlights to the PDF and a folder with some images um, of the area highlights that you took. Slightly, or I hope um, they will be able to add it in um, in due course is if you go here on the right hand side, what you can do is open in directory on the actual file of your notes. Uh, that should open down here. So that will give you this. What would be very useful is if we can also open the PDF um, just quicker, just rather than having to navigate to the assets folder, etc. I think it'd just be quicker just to have open in default directory, and then you can share it. You can do whatever you want with it from the PDF file itself. Just keep in mind, that not this one if we go back to assets if i open the daily reference guide in adobe there is no highlights and there is nothing so if we go to number two on the left hand side logseek we have a highlight on the right hand side we don't and that is because the highlights are being stored outside of the file so just keep in mind if you want to share a file with highlights 
I'm not too sure how you would go about doing that for the time being, unless you open the original and you do the exact same thing. But that's something for a different day. So that was one file. What we might also do is if we are, let's say, learning a language, we might just create a page. Uh, just as an example, again, let's say this is my downloads folder. What I find useful is rather than copying and pasting the file as you download it, to rename it something that makes sense, and then drag and drop, that'll create it. And then we can do the exact same thing as we've just done. Once the PDF opens, and the good thing is if we do area highlight and we do it here, do it yellow this time, and we'll copy ref. So that'll create it as the image. But the other good thing is if I do this. So again, there's a little bit of spillage um, in terms of the highlights. We'll copy ref and we'll paste that. It doesn't yet recognize all of the characters, but you can see it is recognizing some of them. So hopefully, again, as time goes on, that's something that can be improved and um, just so that non-English or non um, different characters can be recognized within the PDF. But I'm not sure if that's LogSeq or if that's the PDF itself. And you can see it did spill over to this side, but it didn't actually copy it. So try to remember how the word, which we'll encounter often, try to remember how this word, which we'll encounter often, it doesn't go on to the other side. So um, it's a bit of a shame, but it's not too much of a concern as it doesn't really impact with what you're trying to do. So similar sort of thing, just very quickly, if we now go back to the assets folder, we've got the learner and Arabic, which is the image that we just scanned, oh, we just annotated, plus now the two files. So what I can do without too much fear is I can just go here, delete these, and nothing will happen because I can close this, navigate away, go back, open it, and it will still be here because it's not within my downloads folder it within my graph folder. Another cool thing um, within LogSeq, which I will do a video on on the next time, is plugins. So for example, one that I use quite often is the mind map. So obviously this is a bit quick because um, I didn't really sort out the, the notes, but you can see it's got the washing machine guide, which is the page title. It's then got the file and then various different subheadings, which I created and then the notes and you can open and expand as as you wish. Just gives you another viewpoint of your notes, um, which sometimes can help. So I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you so much.